Ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silko. The ceremony is based on the perspective of Teo, a half-breed Native American who suffers from post-traumatic stress due to captivity from in the Philippines during World War II. Teo is not only suffering from the loss of a close cousin, but also his favorite uncle whom he believes looked like the Japanese prisoner of war he was forced to kill in a firing squad. Upon returning from the war, Teo and his friends use alcohol to cope with their mental injuries. Teo's own injuries cripple him so much so that he claims to feel like smoke. For a long time, he had been like smoke. He did not realize this until he left the hospital, because while smoke had no consciousness of itself, it faded into the white world of their bed sheets and walls. Unfortunately, his friends are little comfort, as they spend most of their drunken hours reminiscing about how great the war was and how much respect they got while they were in uniform. These stories only make Teo think of the tremendous discrimination the Native Americans face at the hands of the whites, whom they nonetheless seem to admire. When all is lost and Teo feels like he is never going to get better, his grandmother calls a medicine man by the name of Kush. Kush performs for Teo a ceremony for war warriors who have killed in battle, but both Kush and Teo fear that the ancient ceremonies are not applicable in this situation. While Kush did alleviate some of Teo's grief, the ceremony did not cure him completely. This prompts him to consider his childhood, especially the summer before he left for the army. It is learned that Teo's mother somehow ended up as a prostitute. However, she eventually dumped Teo onto her sister, Robert, Josiah, and Granny. During this time before his adoption, Teo would walk the streets searching for food if none was left out for him. He got used to leaving the bar with men giving somebody a dollar to buy the boy food while she was out. After he ate, he slept under the tables and waited for it to come back. Realizing that his ceremony was not enough to cure Teo, Kush sends him to a nearby town of Gallup to see another medicine man by the name of Batoni, who knows more about the problems incurred by the contact between Native American and white cultures. Although he is first skeptical of Batoni's strange ways and especially high connection with the white world, Teo eventually tells him what is troubling him. While Batoni listens, he explains that they must invent and complete a new ceremony, which Teo accepts. After their discussion, Batoni tells Teo stories of his grandfather, Dushini, and the beginning of the creation of a new ceremony to stop the chaos the whites have brought on to their society. Afterwards, Batoni sends Teo back home, reminding him that the ceremony is still far from being complete. Later, he meets up with Harley and Leroy. Teo briefly slips back into their lifestyle for a moment, but soon moves on, heeding the signs Batoni told him as he searches for Josiah's cattle. He does find Josiah's cattle fenced into a white man's pasture. While Teo breaks into this pasture, the cattle run off to its far reaches, and Teo spends the rest of the night looking for them. As dawn approaches, Teo is about to give up when a mountain lion comes up to him. Teo honors the mountain lion and follows its tracks to the cattle. From here, Teo's life is thrown into chaos and betrayal. However, as the climax occurs, Teo eventually reaches his goal and cures himself with the new ceremony. Despite the heartbreaking end to one of his close friends, Teo has ended the drought and the destruction of the whites is stopped. <laughs>